Welcome everybody back to the Junkman's Adventures. I'm the Junkman, and it's time to do another garage tour. This was kind of inspired by uh, Matthew at How To Motorcycle Repair. Uh, check out his channel. I'll put a little link in the description over his channel. He has some real good videos. But anyway, he did a tour of his, uh, his garage shop where he shoots all his videos. And I did this like two or three years ago, and a lot's changed. I've updated a few things. I'm, it's ever-changing. So I wanted to just uh, take another chance here and uh, show you around, show you what my garage looks like as of now, uh, right now, and um, go through some of, uh, talk about some storage solutions too, because that's another thing that people have asked about and on various forums and things. So we'll, we'll start and we'll kind of move around. So first, uh, as you may know, or may not know, uh, the garage where I do all my filming and things and mo work on most of my motorcycles and some of my cars, general maintenance stuff, is uh, attached to my house. So, uh, through this door, go straight into my house, there's laundry room and stuff right outside the door. Plus, um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, we have some cats and things, you'll see more about that. Uh, they have a little cat door so they can go in and out uh, and uh, bother me in the shop. But, uh, starting around here, of course, safety first. Got a fire extinguisher here. Of course, I got other ones around the shop too. Um, paper towels, that's a big thing. Got a roll dispenser here. Uh, car washing stuff here, because um, it's a good place to store it. Uh, this at a thrift store or a garage sale for a buck or something. Uh, and it mainly because it had this uh, bar on here, and I was like, oh, well, okay. Bungee straps, tie down straps, just. Uh, Main things, of course, I, I use my strap, strap sacks, um, so I can just hang them up there, grab and go, and then I know if I'm missing something, uh, I can see it right here. Um, little hat rack thing I made out of some old skis, because I'm an avid skier. Um, put up shelving and things, and of course, uh, various different uh, things I store up here. Uh, Degreasers and whatnot, and, and just other little various things, and then and then it's partially my uh, library for uh, my commonly used. I have more than this, but these are the ones I happen to access a lot more for any and all vehicles I have, uh, and uh, my main motorcycles. Other reference guides are in these binders and things that that they're they're thinner, uh, and then other various uh, service manuals for other bikes. And then other, um, like uh, performance oriented or uh, motor motorcycle books and things of that nature are there, as well as a couple of old catalogs that I keep around just for referencing for old part numbers and things if I'm going to look on eBay. Like I have some things from the 90s, early, very early 90s here, and late 90s and early 2000s. And then uh, uh, reference papers and things. Uh, that are, are like more like leaflets and things for various bikes that I own. Uh, same with owner's manuals and things. My library, keep, uh, I keep a lot of my uh, e uh, paints that I use, mostly primers and things and other uh, paint match stuff uh, out here within e easy reach. Uh, field tank sealers and things, uh, keep those up there. And then uh, of course, every garage has to have a refrigerator. Uh, this is one I've had since, since uh, uh, college, college days, and of course, you have to stick her up a refrigerator. It's not a not a garage garage fridge if you don't have tons of stickers on this. So there's a lot of old stickers that I put on, and then I just keep slapping new ones if I have stickers that I don't know what I want to do with. But uh, right now it's full of Crystal Pepsi because they re-released that. Of course, in the future you won't be able to get that, and I keep a very it's a little extra storage for some other uh, milk and whatever. And then over here, this is an area of the garage I'm still working on. I put up these shelves, and I have various things on. Probably going to do something different here, and that's why they're not painted, because I might take them down. I might put up some, a cabinet here that only comes down to here to close off. Same with this corner with this shelving. That's kind of a catch-all. Some of my funnels and things, and then cat, cat litter and whatnot, uh, wheel chocks, uh, lights, just, this I have not 
worked on is reason why it doesn't uh, look finished because it isn't. Um, and because this, like I said, this garage functions as uh, many other things for me and mostly like you guys out there. Uh, and I have a chest freezer because we uh, butcher our own cattle and uh, have um, meat for all year round. Um, oh yeah, we'll go back over here. Uh, well, I guess I'll start here because people will wonder what the hell this is. Uh, this is a, an automatic cleaning uh, litter box. Works pretty good, actually. do have another traditional one, but they mostly use this one. Uh, when they step on the treadle, it spins around and there's a door that opens and a screen and it um, uh, lets the clumped litter into the bottom drawer there. Uh, their food here and uh, scratching posts and things. and. Uh, the reason why this is cut out here is because right where I'm sitting, uh, or standing, I should say, uh, would have a, I have my good car that I store in here out of the elements when uh, when I'm not working on something that I need the whole area, which most of the time it's sitting in here. Uh, when you open the door, to open the door fully it needs a little bit of room under here, so that's why I did that. Made a little catch out they lay up there. Um, just. I had leftover hinges and things from other projects. So a little door stores all their uh, food and other uh, uh, accessories and things. Uh, same thing, this is all made out of scrap wood here. Um, you know, I have extension cords and other things hidden behind here. Just use some drawer slides that I had left over from some other project that I didn't know what I was going to do. So they open and close each way. So you can see, uh, get to things, but then it closes it off, makes it a finished look. Plus, with the car here, you still got a, a wide berth to walk through here. So um, uh, that's pretty good for this side. Like I said, where I'm standing right now is where this car would be when I don't have it in here. Uh, I'm walking around here, front here, shelving for all my lubricants. Like I said, I'm trying to figure out a, a solution to make this so it can be covered so it's a little more streamlined but easy open up and get to things. So I might mount a door up here and finish the sides, a hinge with some struts. I don't know. I'm not sure. I do like this because it's easy to just grab, oh, this, I know, that, whatever. Um, and various other lubricants and things that I kind of keep on hand. And then just some old decor here, old motocross pants that, uh, those don't fit me, they'll still do, I guess, but uh, they're pretty old and worn out. Um, and then, uh, of course, floor jack, and uh, it's on wheels, so I can move it out here, my uh, uh, drill press, um, which I, you know, use, but don't use a lot, so it stores out of the way. Bottle opener, of course, for beer. Um, a lot of people have asked about these cabinets and things, and we'll move, move along here. These are just stock, pantry cabinets, cheap pantry cabinets. These are the ones that go up and over like a refrigerator and uh, happened to be that the width of those with just a teeny filler piece was uh, the same width as my uh, workbench here width wise. So I just made it kind of a built in and they only stick out with my garage. So if I would ever want to park a car in this side of the garage, uh, the front of the car would come up here. It wouldn't give you much room, but you could still park a car in here with, with this here. But uh, I'm still in the process of organizing these, and I'd love suggestions on it's kind of a catch all for just junk right now. I got some storage bins, and this one I've cleaned out a little bit because, um, as you can see, I'm still in the process. Uh, my, my garage PC that I use for streaming. We'll, we'll slide in the bottom part and I'll have some air holes and things that I'll put in. Um, right now I'm using another another one here for just uh, a moment. It's just sitting here. So this is not generally how it sits. Um, I put my wrenches up and everything so they're easy to get to. Um, and I can always easy, easily see uh, which ones are not where they should be. Uh, T-handles, uh, herring protection. I always want that close by. And hammers and things, because I'm claw hammers and, and mallets and things, I'm always grabbing after that. Another uh, fire extinguisher. Uh, some of my uh, step drill bits here that I use quite often, and nut drivers that I happen to just want to grab and 
T handle, Allen T handles, and uh, we got some uh, electrical here. So for plugging in real easy when I'm working on things. Uh, over here, I store all, and, and this I need to organize a little bit better, but really it is organized by tool type. Everything up here is a specialty automotive type of uh, tool. For example, uh, the front end socket for uh, uh, changing wheel bearings on, on most Fords. And uh, we've got uh, my timing light. i got uh, my air conditioner gauges are in here. Uh, bearing puller seal drivers, uh, fuel pump pressure gauges. Then down here are motorcycle specific tools. Different uh, puller accessories like for flywheels. Um, my dollies, uh, handheld tachometers, uh, we got different flywheel pullers, we got suspension tools. The things I don't grab all that much is stored in there. Up above here, which I'm still kind of organizing, uh, different, uh, like I said, gauges and uh, a few uh, spare parts for some motorcycles and things, some electro electronic stuff like O2 sensors and things. Uh, generally, Adhesives in here and uh, other kind of tie down storage clam clips, clamps, uh, spreaders, um, buffing stuff a little bit, and um, oh, a few other zip ties, and then of course um, some reference numbers for different filters and, and other things for my outdoor power equipment. All right, and then this the bottom part of this cabinet here. Uh, which I, I did a post on this and a video kind of showing what's in here. Uh, mostly rags, just t-shirt rag type things here, you know, that kind of thing, some store bots. And then down here out of scrap wood, I made this little trolley that um, slides out on some rollers and uh, houses all my kind of uh, cordless stuff and, and bits and then some infrequently used tools like hacksaws and things. I rarely use them, but you got to kind of have them. Uh, and C-clamps and things, and I put my belt sander down there. So I don't hardly use any of that stuff down there. Oh, and in the back, and you can't see, uh, there's uh, my very large metric and SAE wrenches, like my inch plus stuff up to two inch uh, wrenches in there and some bolt cutters in the back. Like I said, those aren't things I use a lot, so I don't need easy access to them. Pull it out, I can reach back in there and grab them. Coming around here, we got uh, just a small air compressor for in here. Does the job for the little little jobs I need here. Door to the outside, to a workspace outside. Um, and uh, incidentally, uh, outside to, and I need to do a video, but into the main shop, the big shop for uh, the big equipment, heavy equipment. But uh, that'll be a video for some time later. And moving around here, uh, my main my toolbox houses a lot of my uh, a lot of my uh, hand tools and other things. And like I said, I keep the stuff that I use quite common out so I can see it. I don't really like these toolboxes um, just because I seem to lose things in them. However, I do have them pretty pretty well organized here. Screwdrivers, uh, faulty meters. Um, pin punches, uh, plier drawer, um, you know, a drawer with some electric, uh, power, electric power tools, you know, you know, angle grinders and things, uh, torque wrenches and everything, um, soldering irons and other specialty tools, O2 socket wrenches, uh, um, all kinds of measuring tools, easy outs, uh, screw extractors and things, tap dies, most of that stuff stays in there, half inch, three quarter drive, you know, and then I keep uh, uh, a, set, a set of just cheap drill drip bits here just for grab and go. I have a good set that's in a drawer. And some uh, precision measuring tools there. And then, of course, I have shelving up here where I kind of keep different abrasives and things for different various uh, tools and, and operations. Up here, I don't. You know, I want those fairly accessible because I do use them quite a bit, but not every day, of course. Uh, and then on the line, it kind of goes down to most used to least used. So we got uh, a sort of fuel line and stuff that I keep on hand, hose clamps, e-clips, 
um, roll pins, um, oh gosh, clevis pins, th things like that, little little hardware stuff that so I don't have to be keep running to the store for something little. Uh, right angle grinder accessories and other specialty abrasives for those cutoff wheels. Of course, my chop saws. I got a teeny one, little six inch, and then uh, the fourteen inch there. Um, I said use those off and on, uh, but they're easy to grab. And then uh, I got some small engine parts, then uh, motorcycle tubes, rim clamps, anything for tires uh, goes there. Um, other various motorcycle parts, and then uh, and then I'll show my my uh, motorcycle lift. But normally that has other uh, parts that I access and everything. And then way up top is just uh, all the way around is just um, more uh, kind of display stuff uh, because it's not really easily accessible up there. So uh, I do have some long-term storage or deep storage as it kind of, uh, especially on the other side of the garage for more house stuff. But uh, yeah, and then of course the main area here that I'm standing in, uh, you know, the main motorcycles that I'm riding, uh, depending on the season and then the time of year and if I'm working on one or something. Uh, park in here, I got other sheds where the rest of them uh, live and sometimes I rotate them in if I'm going to ride them a little bit more. But uh, my main, main dirt bike, uh, dual sport, there's the BMW and Buell uh, over there as I ride. These probably the most frequently and the vintage stuff I only get out a couple times a year kind of thing. And then uh, if you back up here, we'll, we'll uh, show you. Some of this stuff would normally be on the shelf back there. But I, I have oodles and oodles of motorcycle parts. This is just a fraction of what I have around and I'm kind of going through some stuff and doing some basic inventory uh, online. This might be a ne uh, my next store a future restoration product project in the near future here and I'll tell you why uh, in the video series or in the first video or the video if it's only one video I don't know how many videos I'll make on this um, this little Tonga truck here I'll explain why I'm doing that uh, in that video but you might want to keep your eye out for that uh, here is just other various different parts and like I said I'm seeing what I kind of, kind of forgot uh, I don't generally sell parts too much, but I am kind of weeding down, so I guess technically I'm going to sell a few of this, these parts here, but don't be sending me messages saying, oh, you got this, would you sell that? No. The answer is no. Um, they go up on eBay, and I'll let you search for them, for them there, because I don't sell parts, I don't sell things. This is not a business for me. This is purely a hobby. Um, this YouTube thing, this video I'm making is purely hobby, um, and, and, and working on the motorcycles are purely my, for my enjoyment, and I film them for the benefit of viewers out there that might have a similar bike that they want, that they're working on, and that they might learn something or learn a tip or a trick, but, uh, so that's kind of the state of the garage as it is, uh, right now in uh this is 2016 i'll probably make an updated one in a, in a couple years or something but uh anyway that's kind of what uh what my main garage where you've seen me uh film most of my uh most of my videos at and i'm going to be doing live streams out of here a little more often in the future as of the posting of this video um i want to thank thank everybody out there for viewing for subscribing uh keep watching you know, share my videos around if you feel compelled to, and uh, be watching for future live streams where you can interact with me live. I answer questions. I answer questions through my website. Uh, I kind of answer them through the Facebook page. I prefer the website better. I can organize things. So uh, check out my website. Like my Facebook page. I'm also on Twitter, so follow me there. I post different pictures of things that I'm working on. But uh, I'm just an average guy doing this. Uh, nothing special here, as you can see. This is probably somewhat of a typical space that most people would have to uh, work on their cars or motorcycles. So I'm not special. So <laughs> um, keep working on your projects. Keep watching my videos for my next projects. And thanks for watching.